So who is the Antichrist? And there's a lot of big talk that this crown prince of Saudi Arabia might be the one. He's a very good candidate, they will argue, because there's a lot of things that are interesting about him. So uh, he's famously uh, abbreviated as MBS. If I write his whole name down, it's just going to be too much. But Mohammed bin Salman. Mohammed bin Salman. I'll just put him down as MBS. So I have a question about him. Is he the Antichrist? I wonder. Well, we're going to look at a lot of things about this character. This character is a very interesting character, and you can see a lot of things about him that would make him a very good candidate of the Antichrist. First of all, I'm quoting to you from The Atlantic, April 2nd, 2018, written by Jeffrey Goldberg. The title of the article, Saudi Crown Prince, Iran's Supreme Lead Leader, makes Hitler look good. So, quote, in fact, when I asked him, so then the reporter asking the crown prince whether he believed the Jewish people have a right to a nation state in at least part of their ancestral homeland. He said, I believe that each people anywhere has a right to live in their peaceful nation. I believe the Palestinians and the Israelis have the right to have their own land. Now, have you ever heard a Muslim actually confess that, that the Jews have the right to live in their homeland? Who in their right mind? See? And the Antichrist, he's supposed to have what? The Jews in their homeland. And there was this conflict for years and years and years. Who would have thought that we'd hear a Muslim saying that? There is no way. No way. How in the world? So interesting. So what about this character? This much at least can be said for Mohammed bin Salman, the putatively reformist crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He has made all the right enemies. Among those who would celebrate his end are the leaders of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, Hamas, as well as Yemen's Houthi rebels and the entire clerical and military leadership of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Wow, he's, what is this guy doing? He's conquering. He's on a roll conquering all these other fellow Muslims, all these other nations. What in the world? Nothing right here. The prince in my conversation with him divided the Middle East into two warring camps, what he called the Triangle of Evil, consisting of Iran, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Sunni terrorist groups, and an alliance of self-described moderate stress that includes Jordan, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Oman, and his Bete Noir, the Iranian Supreme Leader, oops, I just lost it right here, Ayatollah Ali Kham. Okay, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce the name, but whatever this Iranian supreme leader is, <laughs> Prince Mohammed said, I believe the Iranian supreme leader makes Hitler look good. Hitler didn't do what the supreme leader is trying to do. Hitler tried to conquer Europe. The, this, the supreme leader is trying to conquer the world. So notice that he's against this particular Iranian supreme leader, and he says, this guy is worse than Hitler. You see, he's trying to make himself as a peaceful conqueror. So he's making himself look like a peaceful conqueror. And you can see that this so-called peaceful conqueror, he's conquering all these nations. He's trying to reform everything under his control. And he's doing it for the name of peace. He's trying to do it, trying to make these people look like evil dictators. But here's something that's another interesting note about him. The, the, the article is Saudi Crown Prince Recognizes Israel's Right to Exist talks up future ties. And this is a Jewish newspaper press now, okay? Let's see their impression. They're probably thinking, oh, he's just making things up, right? Well, this is the Times of Israel, April 2nd, 2018. Quote, our country doesn't have a problem with Jews. Our prophet Muhammad married a Jewish woman, not just a friend. He married her, our prophet, his neighbors were Jewish. You will find a lot of Jews in Saudi Arabia coming from America, coming from Europe. There are no problems between Christian and Muslims and Jews. That's what this guy said, MBS. Now, you know who, Dr. Rutman said this a long time ago, ever since the early, the early I don't know, maybe 60s, 50s, I don't know, but the three main religions, and if you're a Bible believer who knows about end times and prophecy, you know the three main religions that's going to be definitely involved in this new world order. Catholicism, there is no doubt. Islam, there is no doubt. Now, Dr. Uppman, I remember him saying this. He said Islam's undoubtedly a role, but he can't comprehend how. Because he says these guys just want to conquer everybody. But now, see, you got something like this trying to make peace now. Yeah. This guy, 
which has never been on unhe- which has been unheard of before. And then Judaism. Now what's he doing? He's combining this. This is unheard of. How in the world? You got a candidate for an antichrist. This guy really looks like one. See? Let's keep reading right here. We have problems like you would find anywhere in the world among some people, but the normal sort of problems, he claims. Yeah, sure. Now he says this, if he wants to assure the stability of the Jewish people, he says we need this first, quote, but we have to have a peace agreement to assure the stability for everyone and to have normal relations. Oh, you, you need that Antichrist to set up a peace treaty between the Muslims, the Jews, and basically the world, then, that's, Daniel 9 said he's making a peace treaty with Jews. He said we must have it. By the way, here's an interesting article. You know what the title of this article is? Jared Kushner, as you might know, who's a Jew, and then he's working on the diplomatic relationships amending with Israel and then the Arab nations. But the article title is this, Jared Kushner, can broker peace between Israel and Palestinians because of real estate experience, Netanyahu says. Title of the article, exact word for word title of the article, written by Jessica Kwong from Newsweek, January 30th, 2018. Look at Daniel chapter nine. Look at this, this is really a lot of things that's unlocking prophecy right here. Look at Daniel chapter nine. Don't tell me we're not that close to the rapture. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. So now let's look at the scriptural evidences right here. So first of all, Daniel 9 and verse 27. He says we must have a peace treaty, right? He said must. Yeah. Not just we will. Must. Meaning that they, he's, he's determined that they're going to have to do it in order to maintain peace with Israel. So must. With Jews. And Jared Kushner is the one working it out. And guess what? Jared Kushner and MBS have that close relationship together. Ain't that crazy? They said Jared Kushner is the one that can bring that peace treaty. And then uh, MBS says we must have it. Oh, my. Now, look at right here, Daniel 9, 27. And he, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many, there's your Jews, for one week, one biblical week represents seven, bib- seven years. In the midst of the week, he shall cause, now this is definitely his covenant with Jews, because the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Sometime in the middle of that peace treaty, he's going to break it with them. So you'll notice right here, the Antichrist is undoubtedly going to do that with Jews. But look at Daniel 11 as well, Daniel chapter 11, verse 23. So we see one sign, MBS says, we're determined to do this. That matched. Another thing that matched, so check here. Another thing that matched right here is in Daniel 11. MBS, this guy is taking on the whole Arab world, right? The verse says he becomes, uh, he conquers nations with the small people, the verse says. How about that? That's what the Antichrist will do. Look at Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11, and we will read verse 23. And after the league made with him, see that, making the treaty, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up, see he's becoming strong, conquering, and shall become strong with what? Small people, see that? Check, that matches him. Oh, this guy's the Antichrist now, you know? Another check mark, let's see right here. Look at... The book of Daniel chapter, uh, 1 Kings 10, but keep your hand at Daniel 11, all right? Keep your hand at Daniel 11 and look at 1 Kings 10. 1 Kings 10. How old was Jesus Christ when uh, he ascended up to heaven and paid for our sins? 33 and a half years old, right? Do you know how old this ruler is? 32. 32. You just give it one and a half years more. I wonder what's going to happen. (laughs) Crazy stuff. All right, so uh, remember, the Antichrist has to imitate Jesus Christ, right? All right, so age of Jesus Christ, check. Give it one and a half years, though. (laughs) A little later, just a little later. Another one. 
You know what's interesting about this one? Is that he has a half brother or some type of family member. And his name is Prince Sultan bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud. This is interesting. His half brother or his family member is the first Arab in space for, and in space, if you know conspiracies and all the stuff about NASA and space, who runs those stuff? A lot of things is Masons, right? But see, his brother is connected with, uh, with the group of people that went to outer space. So this is interesting right here. So he has family member connected to strong powers. All right, check. And we do know masonry has a lot to do with New World Order. So we got that one checked now. That's crazy. All right, shall we look at more stuff? Another thing is Salmon. Now remember in Revelation 13, the number of his name, right? The Antichrist, 66, number of his name. So his name is going to play a significance. Huh. Then would, if he's the Antichrist, would his name be important? Well, his name, Salman, is Arabic from Solomon. You know that? And you know what Solomon means? Man of peace. Oh, oh, oh is the Antichrist supposed to come as a man of peace? Yeah. Yes, look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 21. Daniel 11, 21. Watch, watch. The people are going to stop the video here and say, Pastor Kim thinks that this guy's the Antichrist, all right? See, I'm very objective. I don't jump the gun, so let's do this. Look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, the Antichrist, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in what? Peaceably, peaceably. Now look at 1 Kings 10, 14. Solomon, didn't you know he's a type of Antichrist in the Bible? He's also a type of Jesus Christ and the Christian church, a lot of things, but he's also a type of the Antichrist. Why? Solomon, look at this verse. 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 14. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was what? 603 score and six talents of gold. Your money system goes with what? 666. Solomon did his money taxation system right here as 666. Is this what? Let me show you something. Now I'm going to get, you think that's crazy? I'm going to give you the most crazy one right here, all right? Let me give you the most crazy one right here if you think that's crazy enough. You know what's interesting is that he was born at, I think it's, uh, he was born at Riyadh. And if he was born over there, now we're not sure about this, okay? But have you ever noticed that there's a lot of alien crashes or findings around that area on Riyadh, which is interesting? So if, if there were alien crashes there at Riyadh where he was born, so then if there were those alien crashes and there are bases around there, and all of you should look that up, which might be interesting. If there are some bases out there that shelter it, think about this. Could it be that if, the, if he, MBS was born from there and that the alien ships or the bases is nearby, he was born from aliens? And the Antichrist, is he that type? Yeah, because 2 Thessalonians 2, which we won't turn there, he's literally called what? Son of perdition. Oh my, this is getting crazier and crazier, right? Now, you know what we should do? Now we should close this video right here and I can get popular. That MBS is the Antichrist. No, we got to be objective now. Where the Bible is silent, good lesson, you should be silent. All right, it's a fleshy thing if you just jump the gun like that and then say he's the Antichrist because it's just so interesting. That's just fleshy. You don't want to do that. So if we're objective, we got several problems right here. So yeah, he is a good one, but we need these things to happen. First of all, the problem is this. There's no doubt you have to have the Temple Mount. That's the main problem. You, the Jews need to own this because that's demanded at Daniel 9, right? So that's... Problem number one, Temple Mount. And this is what MBS said about that. He said, uh, did he have no religious-based objection to the existence of Israel? He was further asked. To which the crown prince replied, we have religious concerns 
about the fate of the Holy Mosque in Jerusalem and about the rights of the Palestinian people. This is what we have. We don't have any objection against any other people. So see, he doesn't have a thing against the Judaism religion, but he does have a thing against them concerning the Temple Mount, see? So that's problem number one. Problem number two is this. Yeah, you show all of his uh, Arabic descent, but the Antichrist, he has to meet all three, right? So you do this very strongly, but what about this? He's not, you got to find out if he's a Jew. See, that's the thing. And to be crown prince, you know, of the Arabian nations, and to be mixed up Jew, that's, you know, it's really, I don't know. See, so he has to be born Jew. The ten, especially with his tensions, tension with the Jews in the Temple Mount, rather than being joyful that if he is part Arabic, part Muslim, part Jewish, he would be happy with both of them sharing, not having tensions. So why would he show tensions? So that's the second problem. Third problem, as you mentioned, he's got to be Catholic. There's no doubt in the scriptures, I'm not going to turn over there, but he has to be Catholic. I've showed you other videos on that. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Another thing, problem number four, he's not a pope or a homosexual. He's married. So that's the thing. The Bible says that, I showed you at another video, so I'm not going to show it here, but Daniel 11, he has no desire of women. And these conspiracy theorists and online bloggers who just want to build up views and create something fascinating, those guys, they would correct the Bible. He has no desire of women. They will not take that literally. But they would take it metaphorically to mean in some Hebrew translation this, of rejecting the God of Judaism. See, that's, don't do that, all right? Be objective. Don't be fascinating. Be objective. That's the thing. So we see right here these four problems. So thus the conclusion is you got to, we don't know, as I do with many other Antichrist candidates and even rapture dates. You have to realize that we can't really pinpoint and know. Because the thing is, is that if you study, now I'm going to do a video on that someday, but if you look at the beginning of history to end, Paul and the apostles were ready at any moment. The reason why was God set up a rapture and the Antichrist any moment, I believe. He had the candidate and everything set up. If you don't believe that, then uh, if, you if you know dispensationalism, then you would. In dispensationalism, the postponement theory, Israel would have been raptured and the Antichrist would have been that Roman Caesar that time. See, so God had it all set up, but it depends on the heart of man how they would react. So MBS, is he the Antichrist? A lot of interesting things. Check, 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 check. But he's got to check these other marks too.